An application of both active transport and facilitated diffusion can be seen in the axons of nerve cells or neurons, one of which is shown here. The edges of the axon, shown here as white lines, are in fact the cell membrane of the neuron. Within that cell membrane, there are protein channels that transport both sodium and potassium ions by facilitated diffusion. When a nerve impulse passes along the neuron, this is first marked by sodium ions using the sodium channels to move into the axon by facilitated diffusion. This is known as depolarization. After depolarization, potassium ions use the potassium channels to move outside of the axon also by facilitated diffusion. This is known as repolarization. To get the sodium and potassium ions back to their original positions, the cell membrane of the neuron also has protein pumps, specifically a sodium-potassium protein pump. So let's look at the sodium-potassium pump in a little more detail. The role of this pump is to move sodium ions from the cytoplasm where there are a low concentration to the extracellular fluid where there are a higher concentration. The potassium ions are then moved from the extracellular fluid to the cytoplasm against their own concentration gradient. To achieve this, firstly the sodium ions bind to the protein pump. ATP then binds to the protein pump. This is converted from ATP to ADP. The breaking off of the phosphate from ATP provides the energy for the conformational shape change of the protein. This allows the sodium ions to pass into the extracellular fluid. The potassium ions then bind to the protein pump once the sodium ions have been released. The binding of the potassium ions to the protein pump results in a conformational shape change which allows the phosphate group previously bound to be released. This allows for the release of the potassium ions into the cytoplasm and the return of the protein to its original shape so the process can repeat itself. 